Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stefan, and today I'm gonna to present to you my best bird's eye view and understanding of the human biological system, earthing and grounding, which are the wellness practices that help you to normalize and balance and improve your body's bioelectrical activity. Because there's a lot of confusion about this topic. A lot of people think it's a pseudo science, that there's nothing to it. But when you understand the fundamentals of electromagnetism, and you understand that we are electromagnetic beings, we live in an electromagnetic environment, our senses are all electromagnetic in nature fundamentally, then you have to come to this realization that there is an interaction between electromagnetism and um, you know, our life and our health and our wellness and our consciousness. And it's funny because in the like normal scientific paradigm that we live in, we fundamentally honor and respect and recognize that like the heart emits an electromagnetic field and that you can put an EEG and measure people's brain waves. But then when you talk about energetic currents and flows within the body, and uh, different electromagnetic phenomenon affecting things like the expression of our DNA, like affecting cellular behaviors and uh, your emotions, your mood, your feelings, um, and all these different things like routes of energy and flows of energy through your body, aka like a Kundalini uh, awakening, then the lot of that gets labeled as this complete nonsense. So if you understand electromagnetism kind of from this higher perspective, as best as we can, then you can start to see how these things make sense. At least uh, it provides maybe the first steps along a path. So the way to do that is to start with what is electromagnetism and then also to go into electromagnetic potentials, potential energy. We have different forces of nature that we know of. We have gravity. Uh, if you were to jump, you're gonna go back down because that force of gravity is gonna pull you back down. You have a potential energy when you jump up and then that potential energy releases into kinetic energy as you drop down. Uh, if you jump out of a plane, you're gonna go splat. Well, electromagnetism is also a force of um, nature. It has energy contained within its field. So it has these waves and it has a peak, a positive peak, and then a negative trough. And when I say positive and negative, this is really just our labeling of two different yet the same thing. Uh, just as an electric field uh, really is pretty much the same as a magnetic field. They just have different, it's like orthogonal expressions on the same material or the same phenomenon, but they're really pretty much one and the same thing at their core. Uh, they are both uh, carried by the photon, which is uh, in our current understanding a like particle of light. It's the smallest observable unit of light called a quantum. So it's the quantum of light. And electromagnetic potentials are kind of confusing to think about, uh, but we'll do our best. And uh, I'm going to use water to help explain this concept as well as this uh, balloon here <laughs> as a visual aid. Uh, because water actually provides uh, a lot of uh, just contextual information for us to understand electromagnetic potentials. But we'll start with the balloon. So a positive electromagnetic potential, uh, you could say would be this balloon being filled up. And I just filled this balloon up with air. And you can imagine all the air in this balloon as being the uh, stored potential energy. And this balloon is being face up, we'll call it positive electromagnetic potential. And then if I was to flip this balloon down, now it's negative electromagnetic potential. But the balloon analogy runs out because the negative electromagnetic potential um, isn't necessarily like, it's more of like a pooling action. And that's where water becomes useful. Water simultaneously pushes and it pulls. So you have a positive potential and that's like a big push of energy. Like energy can like push from this. It can reach out. Meanwhile, a negative electromagnetic potential will pull that in. It'll, it'll like bring that energy to it. And if you have a positive and a negative and you have something that's conductive in between them, then you have a flow of energy from the positive to the negative. And this happens all the time with, let's say, like thunderstorms is you have these big potential energies that get uh, built up within a cloud system, a storm system. 
A lot of lightning will discharge within the cloud uh, thunderstorm system. And then some of it will go to the ground because the ground itself also is its own electromagnetic potential. Now, earthing and grounding uh, are a wellness practice where you put yourself in contact with the earth. And the reason why it's with the earth, fundamentally, typically, when we talk about this, is because the earth is this massive body of mass that we live on that has a lower electromagnetic potential than us. You could also ground yourself to things that have a lower electromagnetic potential that aren't the earth, but they'll probably connect to the earth in some way. So you could be, let's say like a flagpole, that you touch the flagpole. Well, that is grounded into the earth. And as a result, you're earthing to the, the earth. So that's why it's called earthing. And um, the people try to get away from the fact, in some aspects, people try to get away from the fact, they try to hack the system. You could say hack it um, with these different earthing setups. But really, if you're gonna earth yourself, if you're gonna normalize your bi bioelectric activity by practicing earthing and grounding, you really need to get outside to do it. Um, and so when you are outside and you are earthing and you carry this positive electromagnetic charge by being alive, by being active, moving, all these things, and you put yourself in conductive contact with the ground, we're highly conductive, especially our hands and our feet because they contain a lot of nerve endings, then you facilitate a flow of energy from you into the earth. Now, something that's important to realize when we're talking about these electromagnetic potentials is that there's a little bit of a belief system in place, it seems, that we always want to be super, super grounded. Like it's always beneficial to be grounded and that uh, you should always be trying to ground yourself more often. And I don't necessarily disagree with that, but some people will take that to mean, okay, well, I should really not do much. I should really do very, very little. Uh, if I do any sort of activity, I'm gonna build up this charge and that's not good for me. I should really just totally relax, just, just, just be, uh, just to exist and not do anything. And yeah, you can do that. Um, and then there's a the flip side where people think, oh, well, this is a waste of time. Like, what am I doing when I'm out here sitting down meditating? I'm not doing anything. I'm not accomplishing anything. I have to go, 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 go. And so when it comes to understanding uh, earthing and grounding, how you can use these wellness practices to improve your health and wellness, to improve your lifestyle, to improve, let's say, your moods and emotions and grow your consciousness, it's about finding a balance between that positive electromagnetic potential and that negative electromagnetic potential. Earthing connects you to these negative electromagnetic potentials and then doing things like exercising or uh, working on some big creative project and there's this outpouring of creative energy um, being very active, having a very busy day, accomplishing a lot, that is like a positive electromagnetic energy, you could say. Um, and that's why I find inspiration with water because if you have something floating down a stream, for example, or you, have, you just have, let's say, a stream of water, like we have behind me, a little, a little river here, the water is pushing in front of it. So whatever, let's say there's a rock in the middle, it's pushing against that rock. But at the same time, you have a leaf floating in the, in the river and it's being pulled along by the current. So I think it's important when talking about earthing and grounding and the bioelectrical system, kind of from this bird's eye view, is to realize that both the push and the pull are important. Like honoring and using that duality is important. And feeling when it's beneficial to do one versus the other uh, is really key because there might be a big push of energy and perhaps you are very stressed at this moment. Uh, you're at kind of like a critical stress threshold. You're an earthquake that's about to rupture. Then that would be the time for you to do some grounding to incorporate and bring into your personal energetic sphere and life and aura and body those more negative potentials those free electrons, de-stress, so then that wave does not uh, overload you. Or perhaps you're in a position where you have a big stress threshold that you can accommodate, and this wave of positive activity and energy is going to allow you to really like open up new energetic channels 
therefore start to work with some of these dormant energies, energies that may have been dormant for many, many years, perhaps weeks, months, years since childhood. And then you can flush out anything that is stagnant and no longer needed uh, by you, by your consciousness, uh, by your body, you know, any of your different bodies, you have your physical body, your mental, emotional, and your spiritual. So you can see how one wave could be very beneficial for one person in regards to optimizing and reorganizing their bioelectric energies. And that same wave could really just put someone down and out. So one person may need to phase into the more um, negative electromagnetic potential activities like earthing, grounding, resting, meditation, sleep, um, yin yoga perhaps, and then someone else may benefit from being very, very active, doing a hard strength training session because that, that electromagnetic uh, you know, pulse that they're experiencing, whether it's in the Schumann resonances, whether it's from a space weather event, maybe it's just they're just what's happening in their life, that could be enough to give them the energy to reach these new horizons and then kind of um, make new changes, new connections in the brain, or perhaps uh, find knots of energy or even physical knots within the body, take those, break them up, dislodge them, and push out whenever it needs to be pushed out. Now at the same time, uh, sometimes there's these like quiet moments and perhaps you're in phase with the natural energy rhythms and that quiet moment is perfectly timed. Like there's this, this natural lull and your body needed that natural lull. And I in general find with myself that uh, the more I stay in phase with the earth's natural rhythms, the, the easier life is for me. If I just go with the flow, I allow myself to be pushed and to be pulled by these energetic flows, just like water. Um, then I find that my life gets easier and easier. I find my creative intelligence increases, my ability to um, kind of learn new things and uh, make new uh, realizations and to be able to share uh, what I'm learning with others. It all just becomes easier, I find. Uh, so sometimes there's these natural lulls that it's good to just kind of just feel it out, slip into it. Perhaps that lull now provides you enough wiggle room to then do that active thing that before would have critically stressed you, and then you can finally break that thing up and release it. So everyone's individual, everyone's at a different stage. That's why studying, earthing, and grounding um, is so difficult with like hard scientific methods because A, to get a large control group is difficult, let's say 100, 200,000 people, and then B, everyone's in such a different place in their life that it's really, really difficult. Everyone's lifestyle is different, so your lifestyle affects your bioelectrical system, like when you wake up, just very simply, like when do you wake up? When is light causing you to wake up? When is the temperature triggering your cortisol release? When do you go to sleep? Um, when are you drinking your coffee? Because uh, that spikes your cortisol. Uh, when you are you working out? If so, when are you working out? All these things have a huge influence. And you have your diet, you have the energy of who you surround yourself with, and so in general, with um, and we haven't even really gone into like true bioelectricity, which is like how your cells and how different molecules in your body, let's say like a protein or an enzyme or how your DNA react to electromagnetic energies. But we're talking about electromagnetic potentials because you have these potentials in your body. You have a big positive potential with your brain. You have a big positive potential with your heart. Of course, this emits an electromagnetic field. Then you have a big positive potential near your reproductive organs. Then you have negative potentials in the areas that you typically connect to the ground. So you have an, a more negative potential, it's all relative, a more negative potential with your hand, uh, your hands, and then also your feet. Um, so if you uh, start to understand these electromagnetic potentials in your body and how they shift and change across time and location, then you can uh, start to better understand and just feel what is optimal for you to do at any given moment. You can more easily slip into the flow, into these energy rhythms, and it just takes time and practice You'll, you might make, make mistakes. Um, some people are at a point where they've built up so much charge that by opening up these channels and by getting into, let's say, conductive contact with the earth actually causes like a detox reaction. 
because that's the first time their body's been able to actually take a lot of these accumulated toxins and be able to purge them safely. So they're in a, you could say like a really bad spot. Now why did they get to that spot in the first place? Perhaps that person, this hypothetical person, their consciousness uh, led them to get to that huge potential to then experience that flow of energy eventually because it's a strong enough signal for them to make the connection of, okay, I can't do that, or I need to do this, or I made this realization. So uh, personally in my life, I like these realizations to come from smaller signals. The quieter the signal is, the less stress and impact it is on your body. And I like that. I like it to be easier, uh, but I still want these signals to be understood. So, and yeah, I'm, I'm here in Riga, Latvia. It's a really beautiful country. And behind me, they have all these uh, little boats and everything that go along the river and people are enjoying themselves. And we're close to the ocean. It's really nice weather. You can hear the seagulls and different things. So I wanted to talk about electromagnetic potentials and energies, and energy flows. <laughs> and the different maybe tones and frequencies that you can experience in your life, in your body, depending on where you are, by actually going to a nice green area out in the park, by the water, surrounding myself with these earth and these water energies. And I think an important way to, or a valuable way to learn these concepts intuitively, maybe not hard scientifically, but intuitively, is actually go into these environments and to feel these things and experience them. So really easy way to do that is with earthing. I have a lot of videos on earthing and earthing can be as simple as just walking around barefoot or maybe you're laying down or you're sitting here meditating. Uh, it can also be doing yoga in the park. It can be um, just playing around. Uh, it can be swimming at the beach, um, swimming in the water, uh, laying out on the sand. Those are all great ways to practice earthing. And I would also say that a lot of people, uh, this is a way to find balance. Earthing and grounding is a way to find balance, both just like in terms of your autonomic nervous system and finding balance in like your heart rhythms and stability there, improving your heart rate variability um, <clears throat> and normalizing and like potentiating good coherent brainwave activity synchronistically across your entire brain, right? We talk about like finding balance there, but also finding balance energetically more on the metaphysical side, spiritually. And a lot of people, uh, in my experience, uh, will build up these big charges unconsciously. They're very, very active, they're doing a lot, and then they still need to find balance. Everyone still needs to find balance. And they then may pull energy from others. They're kind of like an energy vampire, right? That's how they then discharge. Or that's how they then get energy. Is they're discharging here, here, here. They're giving, giving, giving. They're really working hard at this, 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 me, me, me. And then they, again, want to pull, pull, pull from other people to, uh, to fill and fill in their energy and find balance. And so I think everyone should be very mindful of seeking balance internally, uh, and then they can broadcast that balance externally. And if you are uh, perhaps, I mean, we've all done this at times, let's be honest. Uh, if you are uh, pooling energy from others often uh, to seek your own balance, or maybe you're, you're pushing here, then you're in this deficit there, uh, that is just creating imbalance in other people and other systems, other institutions, whatever. So it's, I think that's one reason why earthing is becoming so popular because people are discovering that by finding internal balance, not only does it improve your health and wellness, just like your basic like, oh yeah, I feel good every day, look good, feel good, that type of deal. You know, no one wants chronic disease, I hope. Um, but then also it's, it improves your interactions with just other people and just your, like how you experience reality, how you see things, your consciousness, you start to have this higher perspective. And, uh, by talking and by kind of visualizing electromagnetic potentials, this positive, this negative, this peak, this trough, this flow, this, you know, this push, this pull, I think this helps us to kind of by looking at this from a lot of different directions, we can start to see a little bit of a bigger picture here uh, and how it applies not only to our health and wellness, but also to our spiritual growth, to our interactions with others, to, um, to the growth of our consciousness and how it's 
good to engage in positivity and it's also you shouldn't be afraid of negativity. You shouldn't be afraid of going into the dark cave. That may be where your treasure lies, but you also, uh, you know, should try to, um, you know, carry good energy with you and not uh, be someone that's like tipping over others uh, and putting imbal creating imbalance in others to find balance within yourself. Uh, so find your own balance. I think yoga is great for that, you're right? You can practice uh, all your different balancing poses, tree pose. Um, and that's a simple way actually to do this is you can actually just practice balancing yourself. And uh, yeah, it sounds silly, but by doing these practices and putting your mind into these different spheres of thought and action, you can put this all into practice and um, actually feel and experience what happens as a result. So. Um, I hope you found this, vid this video useful and this information useful. Uh, I, you know, this, this concept of potential energy is very nebulous. So I can't say that I've like definitively given you the final answer. Uh, it'd be foolish of me to say that, but I definitely wanted to just provide a few different ways of looking at it. I hope you found that useful. I have more videos on electromagnetic fields and health and also earthing and grounding. So go check those out. Like the video if you like the video, subscribe. I hope to see you in future videos and I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao.